Hello to everyone and welcome to this video about secure architecture for your NAS, uh, Synology NAS. So you've bought your, um, your NAS and you're going to plug it, of course, in your network. This is the, you know, the usual case, what I see most of the time. So you've got your NAS, you've got your PC here, you are inside your own uh, local area network you've got your home router just here with the border between the internet and your local area network okay you've got your connection here so this is your LAN there you've got the uh, all the uh, www web stuff and the connection here so this is the simplest architecture that you can have. It's a direct connection between the web and your NAS. So usually when you have your router in this uh, kind of uh, architecture, you're going to have the NAT. You're going to have uh, port forwarding. I'm going to call it just PF, port, port forwarding. And you're going to have uh, DMZ. Okay, so the NAT and the uh, port forwarding is it's about the same thing actually it's just to say that if you are communicating to a special port for the router it will be redirected to the or forwarded to your NAS this is a configuration that you're going to do on your um, router now you also have the notion of DMZ in some home router which I absolutely do not recommend is in this configuration you just specify an internal IP and every traffic that is um, destined to the router will be forwarded to the NAS. So if you are, for example, having some services, I'm going to say, Ali, let's go HTTPS, for example, you've got WebDAV, uh, you've got the cloud uh, service of Synology on port 6690, if I remember well. Um, you've got the SMB, oh, it did not stay. You've got the SMB, you've got the AFP, you've got NFS, etc., etc., and all. And so, for those sharing protocols, for example, um, those could be accessible from the or should be accessible only from the inside, never from the outside, for two reasons. The first reason is all about performance. Those protocols do not perform well on uh, <clears throat> on the internet. And the uh, second reason is, of course, and it should be the first reason, actually, it's all about security. If you take the SMB example, if you do not choose the SMB v3, you do not have any encryption. And if you use SMB v2, that means that all of your data and that is, you know, being routed through the Internet could be, uh, well, is visible. So just imagine if you go to a hotel or to a hotspot uh, place, like a cafe or a hotel, everyone can see this traffic. So it's really not recommended. And also the SMB protocol has some vulnerabilities like the AFP, NFS, every kind of protocols or services anyway have vulnerabilities. But if you do not need to expose them on the public side, well, just don't expose them. So that's why it is recommended to have the NAT or the port forwarding configuration only. Now, of course, um, if you use the NAT, you have to open a hole in your firewall to allow the incoming traffic. Or you can use the uh, Quick Connect, the Quick Connect uh, functionality of the Synology NAS, which I absolutely do not recommend. So, first of all, the Quick Connect can act also as a uh, dynamic DNS uh, service. If you have a dynamic IP address, you can use Quick Connect for this or use a dedicated dynamic DNS service like uh, noip.org or something like that. And um, why I do not recommend Quick Connect, it will be, uh, we'll talk about this in some other videos. It's um, because you don't have complete control of what's happening. So the only thing that is good about Quick Connect is just you are not obliged to open the firewall. If the Quick Connect servers at Synology cannot contact your NAS directly, then it will create a virtual tunnel between you and the client or you 
and the Synology Relay server. It depends on the configuration that you have. But the fact that you do not need to open a, a port on your router, that's the only good thing about Quick Connect. So Quick Connect um, and this infrastructure that I'm showing you, architecture I'm showing you, is very easy to put in place, easy to configure. There is a very low, low maintenance about this. Uh, but this is a big no, no, because you're authorizing the web to connect to your NAS to some vulnerable services, like, for example, the HTTP service uh, that serves for the uh, management uh, web portal or also some uh, other functions like the file station, photo station, video station and all this stuff. This I do absolutely do not recommend using this kind of architecture at home or in a small business now what you can do i also see some people talking about hey man don't open all those ports um, uh, through the internet you know what just install the vpn package on your nas and uh, just open the uh, vpn ports on your router for for the port forwarding and that's it man don't do anything more well it's true and it's completely wrong. Why? Because um, in, st in terms of um, security, I wouldn't put some kind of services like that, like a VPN service directly on the same, um, same device that has all my confidential data. Why? Because if the services is vulnerable, it can be exploited and then the attacker has a complete foothold on your device if it gets compromised. So this is one of the reasons I would not mix them up. The second one, this is a Synology uh, package and Synology is not a security company. Of course, they have some security engineers and security stuff, but it's more of a, a reaction time if the Synology package is outdated. Maybe they will not issue a patch right away. So that means that you are still vulnerable for some time until they do it. They are quite reactive on uh, vulnerabilities but still i wouldn't put my my eggs all my eggs in the same basket i wouldn't do that so this is one of the reason for this also in terms of security is a big no no now there is another possibility is to put inside your router the uh, vpn service so that's that's better already because at least if they ever compromised uh, if they ever compromised your uh, router, they will not have direct access to your data. They might have access to your NAS, but not to your data. So maybe they will have the SSH or Telnet command line showing up, for example, and everything, but not con direct access to the data. So that is something a little bit better. Now, I still would not recommend it um, as usual, because if they uh, also, they compromise the router that they can access easily access all the uh, local um, the LAN devices so I would not recommend this and the last thing why I would not recommend this architecture in general because you have your NAS and your PCs and your smartphones on the same uh, network which is for example let's say that on the NAS you are only using the SMB uh, services but you have the AFP service that is up and running because you did not uh, turn it off. So imagine that your PC, for example, is now getting compromised and uh, suddenly your PC has a direct and uncontrolled access to your NAS um, and maybe the malware is attacking the AFP or NFS service that is online but not being used by you and they could try to compromise. So this is a pessimistic scenario, but you never know, you have a friend, a colleague, a guest, I don't know, no, someone comes into your network and you got to be careful about that. So I would not recommend this architecture. Everything I'm talking about here is easy to put in place, easy to maintain. It's no biggies in terms of, you know, functionalities. Everything works well, but in terms of security, this is not something I would do. Um, so that's it for this one. But now I'm going to talk to you about the last one, the last um, architecture that uh, you could have so here you still have your router okay then here you've got um, a little box here that we're gonna call the UTM which is called for um, 
short for Unified Threat Management, so a big, a little and big security box. And here you've got the, uh, let's say, your DMZ interface, and you've got your NAS. And there you've got your LAN interface, okay? And all your uh, PC devices and everything. And there is the one interface of the UTM. And you got all the usual WW stuff. And going here. So here it does not change. You still have to need to need the NAT, the port forwarding, and the D or the, the DMZ. So here in this configuration, DMZ is not um, as uh, it does not pose a security risk as much because usually you're going to say that hey. The DMZ here is this address here. So any kind of traffic that you receive, please just transfer it to the U UTM device. And then you're going to configure all the security aspects on the UTM. So you're going to configure some firewall rules, some IPS rules. If you want some web application firewall rules, uh, reverse proxy, uh, country restriction, um, DDoS protection, if I can write it, DDoS protection, uh, and a lot of things that I probably forget. And you also have a possibility to have the VPN on a specialized um, security device, which gets updated more often, usually more often, when there are those kinds of, um, of security problems. So this is the uh, best infrastructure that you can, architecture that you can have. And um, you will have a better visibility uh, because everything that is going to your NAS, um, you will be able to see it through the UTM and you can apply uh, bigger restrictions and more complex restrictions. A lot of things that I will not talk about here because this will be for advanced users in another video. And uh, you can, I'm going to show you some free products uh, so first of all, you, you need to have a hardware like a PC or a um, virtual uh, PC or special boxes, but you need to have two interfaces at least. So it's going to be PFSense. I'm sure that a lot of you uh, knows about it. And you're going to have the Sophos. Sophos. Uh, I think it's called Home UTM. And uh, I think they also have the XG firewall. Okay, so PFSense, I'm not using it because um, at the time I started all this, I used the Sophos Home UTM. And actually, it's a great free product up to protect 50 IPs. So that's great for home usage. It's only for home, it's not for uh, business usage. And you have the XG firewall, which is the newer newer thing that I did not use um, because they did not have all the security functionality like the home UTM. And for the home UTM, you also have, um, I would like to notice, to say to you that you have the uh, web control, application control, and a lot of things. The web control and application control will be very important for the advanced security measures we will talk about later. Um, you can really lock your device down with all of this. And in case your PC gets compromised, um, the PC will only be able to attack your NAS with the um, services that you have um, specifically authorized through the UTM and if some um, uh, protocols are not encrypted uh, it can be able to see any kind of suspicious traffic and the IPS can block that or the web application firewall so I think that's it for this video about um, architecture I would strongly suggest that uh, maybe this, uh, the last scenario, is the one that everyone could use because it would be very, uh, it would be very hard or harder to get into your system because they have to pr compromise probably your router first, and if they don't need to because you have open services on the UTM, they have to hack into a specialized security 
equipment that is regularly updated and you will be able to see most of the times that someone is trying. I've seen a lot of people trying to uh, compromise my VPN service, my HTTP service of the NAS and everything. So this is the best architecture that you can have. So I hope this video has been informative for you. And if you have any questions, well, feel free to ask. And I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.